blisters. The ceiling was just kind of blistering at all the tape joints where I just pulled down the tape joints and everywhere there was joint compound on the joints. The tape came down and most of the joint compound came down. I asked a question on the videos and also in a couple of my shorts and I got all kinds of comments of why they thought this joint compound and tape was coming down. Everything from the mud was frozen. They thinned down the joint compound too much. They used hot mud and paper tape, which some people say is a no, no. I even got several comments where they thought the sealant didn't get primed before the drywall finishing when it's done, but I've never heard of people priming before drywall finishing, that's for sure. How about you? Let me know in the comments what you think's going on, but what I did is I went ahead and just pulled down every single tape joint, made sure I cut it right there at the intersection where it meets the wall. You don't want it to pull down. Like I said, I'm in Florida, so there's a lot of homes here that have drywall outside. They make an exterior soffit board too. I'll go ahead and cut right where the tape is on that butt joint so it doesn't peel off the stucco or anything crazy like that. Just go ahead and cut it, score it. What I did is I just went ahead and scraped all the loose parts off so I could retape it. I used my banjo and some fiber fused drywall tape to do the finishing again of these tape joints. Goes pretty quick with the banjo. Got the big flat out of the way and then I just went around and did all the butt joints. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more of these type of videos. Just kind of wipe it down. Get it smooth so the second coat goes real nice. Next, it was time for the skim coating. I used an all-purpose joint compound. I didn't thin it down much because when you're going over a texture like skip trowel texture, you want to keep most of the body of the joint compound. If you mix it too thin, you're going to have to do multiple skim coats. I'm using a 14-inch drywall taping knife and some USG all-purpose joint compound. All right, got everything skim coated except the tape joints because those weren't quite dry yet. So I'm going to go ahead and skim coat those doing the butt joints first just getting it up there and smoothing it out you don't want to pile it up because naturally there's going to be a small bump wherever you add the tape on a butt joint so you just go over it and get it nice and smooth then it's time to get the long flat and I also showed you in my last video a secret feature of a drywall taping knife to get perfect factory tape joints every time there's a concave side and a flat side of the taping knife, so that works out perfectly when you're finishing or repairing tape joints. I'll leave a link to the secret feature of a drywall taping knife at the end of this video in the end screen. And there's the whole skim coated ceiling. Well, it's the next morning after skim coating this ceiling and I've got another drywall dilemma here on this project. It appears that all the tape joints have discolored to a yellow, like there's some kind of water stains, possibly not sure what caused it. I almost think that what's going on is there's a lot of moisture coming from that pool from evaporation and they have the vented soffit. So I think moisture from the pool is getting sucked in through the vented soffits and then coming back down on the back side of the drywall because when you finish joints there's nothing sealing the back of the joints so that's in my opinion in combination with the heat and humidity here in Florida and the attic getting so hot and the moisture and that's what made the tape joints fail and I think the yellow spots are actually moisture coming in from the evaporation of the pool water. Let me know in the comments if that changed your mind of what you think is going on with this ceiling. Subscribe for more skim coating and drywall tips. Thanks for watching.